The films of Dario Argento are the most baroque, most stylish, most inventively violent, most dreamlike, most nightmarish, and most haunting films that the Italian horror cinema has ever produced. Dario came along with a completely fresh view at the latter end of the 60s when one was really needed. He changed the face of horror fantasy. Any filmmaker working in this genre will acknowledge an influence from Dario Argento. I think that Dario can influence people and has influenced directors with his absolute courage at what he can do on the screen. No one can imitate that stuff. <laughs> Dario was probably more scared of the films that he made than his audience was. I've seen the guy just shaking and watching his own film. For me, he's the only director in Italy uh, that I admire, for real, the only brave one. No politic, no moralism, no anything. It's art. You just have to watch it and feel it. He's an impressionist. And it's, it's just, it's fabulous. His stuff is just fabulous to watch. Dario Argento was born in 1940 in Rome. His mother was a photographer. His father produced films. So from his earliest days, Dario was steeped in the world of the arts. I spent a lot of time in my mother's studios while she photographed the famous vamps of the time. It's strange, but I do have this affinity with a female face. Dario also remembers his father's influence. When I was a child, we always talked about the cinema. We discussed it constantly. During the 50s, my father would come home, sit down at the table and say, boys, I'm afraid that the Italian cinema is in crisis. This is still true today, but he was saying it in the 50s. Like many famous artists of the macabre, young Dario had periods of illness when his only companions were his imagination and his dreams. There was a dark, shadowy aspect to my personality because I like to stay alone. I like to be alone and read for a long time. I lived in my own fantasy world, created from books and filled with strange adventures. And I would read all the time, but I went children's books. I read Shakespeare. I read 1001 Nights, full of sex and beauty. After this, I read the stories of Edgar Allan Poe, which were my first formative introduction to the world of the occult. Dario eagerly absorbed the dark universe of Edgar Allan Poe. He had encountered one of the most powerful influences on his later career. Poe's fevered, hallucinatory visions were not so far removed from the dreamlike qualities of the movie screen. Cinema was a big thing for me. It meant going into the dimension of dreams. This is what I discovered at the time, and it was marvelous. When I went to the cinema, I lived in the dimension of dreams, and I was addicted to the cinema, completely addicted to it, like a drug. Dario's passion for the cinema led to his first job as a film critic, and it was during this period that his own cinematic style evolved. My films are always visually striking because, as a critic, I liked that sort of film with strong images. 
In fact, when I met Sergio Leone, it was maybe the first time in my life that I met a person who also reasoned in terms of images. It seemed to me like a fantastic thing, new, beautiful. I liked him very much for this. And it was Sergio Leone who gave Dario his first opportunity to work on a film. He believed in me at that young age, even though I was just a critic, and with great courage he gave me the opportunity to write Once Upon a Time in the West with Bernardo Bertolucci. I became aware of Dario's name when I saw Once Upon a Time in the West, this great western that I fell in love with. And I thought it was wonderful when it came out. It was a real big, giant opera. It had some pretty impressive credits on it. Uh, Bertolucci and Dario Argento and, and Sergio Leone. And I said, who is this Argento character? After working with Leone, Dario began developing a script of his own. His ambition at this time was simply to write. Mi vende l'idea, però potrei farlo meglio io, che se non altro... Then I got the idea that I could do it better myself. At the time I knew cinema only in theory, because I had been a critic. However, I felt I could do a better job. So I asked to be able to do this, and it was very difficult. My father helped me a lot, and together we spent more than a year and a half trying to find the finance for my film. The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, Dario's first thriller, also turned out to be his first commercial success. When the film was finished, I talked with my colleagues, saying, this film has been a huge hit, so I must make more giallo films. And everybody told me, yes, yes, I'd be crazy to stop making them. So I made other films trying to explore my nightmares in this same giallo style. The term giallo derives from the lurid yellow-paged paperback thrillers which were popular at the time. Mario Barber had introduced them into films, but Dario was to add an operatic and graphic style that was all his own. Argento's distinctive approach was strongly evident in his next two films, Cat and Nine Tales with Carl Malden and James Franciscus and Four Flies on Grey Velvet which starred Michael Brandon. It was fascinating, very different, it had a style about it that was really compelling and so I call my agent I say, this guy knocks on my door, I don't know how he found where I live, you know this was up in the hills this place and Anyway, he says, uh, what's, I said, Dario Argento. He said, kidding? Dario Argento is the most popular director in Italy. I said, seriously? He said, more money than Fellini, this guy's movies. He's, he's unbelievable. There was, however, one small problem to overcome. So the next thing is, I'm flying to Rome. And all of a sudden, Dario comes in, and he looks at me, and he goes, oh, no, no, no. You know, there's a whole conversation going on. I go, what's, what's going on? What's wrong? Finally, there was a, a girl named Patricia, and she was the translator of the script. And she said, your eyes. Is something wrong with my eyes? What's wrong with my eyes? They said, the wrong color. Wrong color? What do you mean? My eyes are the wrong color. It's all a matter of lighting. They go from brown to yellow to hazel. They change colors. So all of a sudden, Dario's got a light, and he takes the light, and he's going, ah, okay, okay. Now we're all settled, everything's okay now. <laughs> 